Thank you, everyone. Uh, so, good afternoon. I'm the last speaker, so I'm going to try to keep the energy higher uh, since I'm the last one. So, uh, very quickly, uh, I think all of us are here because now we're trying to see how we can better manage better business resilience. And today, I'm going to talk about what does it take to keep a finger on the pulse and what you can do to digitize for better productivity. Yeah. So a quick introduction to Experian, which is a, a very a big household brand in US and UK, but in Singapore here is mainly a B2B business. Uh, so Experian is actually a global information service company where we are in 30 countries, hiring over about 21,000 people. Uh, as a business, we distribute data on individuals as well as on corporates, where we supply this data to banks, fintechs, MNCs and SMEs who would like to make better decisions using data and uh, innovation. So that's where we are placed. Uh, who am I? I'm Head of Product Management for Experian Credit Services in Southeast Asia. So in my day job, what I do is I manage the platforms uh, like the web platform, QuestNet, uh, the APIs that are used by our customers to actually uh, buy the report and then to integrate into their systems and processes. So we are responsible for looking for data points to enhance our existing reports that primarily can cover business information, litigation information, sanctions information and so forth. So that's what I do. Uh, Apart from my day job, I also have a night job, which is I sit on the exco of the Digital Trust Committee of SG Tech, the largest trade uh, association in Singapore. So within this trade association, last year, we defined this new concept of digital trust, which we believe will be one of the big trends in the next decade. And in Singapore, we're trying to see how we can write on this big trend and to be able to nurture and grow a workforce that is actually skilled in digital trust. And we're also looking at using developing technologies uh, that will allow people to trust each other. So for example, PET techno uh, technologies and so forth as well. So that's what's my role in SG Tech in the Digital Trust Exco. Previously, I also spent about 13 years in Citibank, uh, rotating across different departments such as cards, uh, SME banking, uh, mortgages. So I do understand uh, some stuff about uh, banking as well, which I'll try to relate to you guys uh, as I share, uh, do my sharing later on. Uh, and before that was MES, the central bank. Okay. So you're still here, although I'm the last speaker. And the question is, why are you here? And well, the answer is, number one, if you are currently a founder of a tech company or you're aspiring to find your own company, I think it's very hard to start a business. It's even harder to make it profitable. So if you intend to run a business or you're already running a business, you should really pay attention because I'm going to share with you the tips on how to make yourself and your business resilient. Number two, if you're not working, I mean, if you're not a founder today, but you are working for someone today, you should also listen because it differentiates you from your peers who only knows tech, but you now know business context. It makes you a lot more uh, attractive from a skill set perspective when you're engaging with senior stakeholders. So I think, yeah, again, another uh, very strong reason to listen to me. Okay. All right. So uh, why is it important to keep uh, a finger on the pulse? Uh, and I think all of us are already aware, interest rates are all-time high, uh, prices are all-time high, margins are all-time low. So as a result, uh, every little bit of misstep will cost your business seriously. So um, there are, and as I mentioned before, it's already very hard to attract or to get customers. But once the customers come onto your books, the question is, how do you know they are still the same as you met them from day one? What if they have already deteriorated? What if they're not going to pay you money soon? Is there a way you can start finding out earlier than everyone else who they owe money to? So I'm going to share with you the different kind of data points that exist out there in many markets. And then you can look to secure some of this data to help you manage your portfolio of business customers or individual consumers who are using your products and services. And what you want to do is to track them, keep an eye on them, to make sure that you're aware if anything is going to go wrong. So number one, I'm going to talk about business changes. So to give an example, today you start uh, working with a company, they tell you that they're in the tech industry. And today the director is Mr. A and the shareholder is Mr. B. 
And then tomorrow, for some reason, all these directors started changing and all the shareholders started changing. And they may even change the industry that they're operating in. But guess what? They won't tell you. Okay, you'll be the last to know. Even the bankers will know. Okay, so what then happens is the only way they know or we know is if they file these changes officially with the business registry. And what if I tell you that I can send you alerts of the changes as it happens? So at least you'll be the first to know that something material, some key personnel has changed. And there, after, you can appoint someone to go speak to the, them to understand what's happening. Is something going on wrong in the company? That's why everyone's leaving. Or maybe you just want to say hi, to say that, hi, I'm your account manager. I would love to speak to you on your future growth plans in your new capacity. Can we have a chat? So knowing all this information can protect you from risk, but also allow you to upsell or cross-sell accordingly as well. So business changes, very important. Next, litigation. Quite self-explanatory. If your customer is being hit with a very big lawsuit, sometimes amounting to $100,000, $1 million, and not being able to pay that fine or to settle the suit may mean the business actually closed down or the individual gets bankrupted. So again, if you have extended credit terms to the person or you have loaned the person money and they haven't quite paid up, you really want to know what's the status of uh, their litigation and whether are they on the route to winding up or bankruptcy. So this is a very key field that's being used by a lot of companies. Uh, it could be trade, B2B, peer-to-peer -peer lending, even consumer loans in most banks use this kind of monitoring to make sure that they do not lend to people who are already in a bankruptcy situation because you can't recover your debts. So litigation, very, very important as well. Next up, we have payment. So most of the time, uh, payment information is very sacred. It's very secret. You don't really see it out there. It's not public information. However, if you're part of a bureau, which is a close network of people who contribute data about who they're dealing with, that's where you can then get payment data, where you can tell whether is this person paying uh, their uh, creditors in a prompt fashion or are they already 90 days late versus the due date. So all this information is actually out there within a closed group bureau. And you also have instances where despite you contributing to the bureau, the customer still do not want to pay you. What you can then do is to use the negative list in the bureau to put their name on it so that they, they actually appear in a negative way to their prospective customers or vendors. And because they don't want their business to be impacted, they will then pay you back. So it's very, very important to be able to know when your customers or creditors are not going to pay you back anymore. And when they do not pay, you have the ability to actually add them to a negative list and that will help you recover your money. So, okay. And sometimes some of this payment data is too much. Maybe you're not keen to know, are they paying people 30 days late, 60, 90, 120? You are not into the details. You just want a quick traffic light or a score to tell you that, yes, this person can be trusted from a credit perspective or not, and you want to move on over there. So there's also scores monitoring where we can monitor uh, the entity or an individual to see how their credit performance is uh, evolving. And then we will uh, alert you, for example, when such uh, deterioration happens. So there's also a slightly easier way, compressed way, to monitor someone's credit report. Lastly, financials. Um, in many markets, uh, most entities, especially the small ones, are not obligated to file financials, but many bigger ones do. And they normally will report once a year. So one of the other ways you should do is to also be alerted every time they file a financial, and you should get a copy of that to compare this year's data, last year's data, how they're performing from a revenue perspective, uh, cost perspective, is there any ongoing concern uh, that you see in the uh, annual report? So these are some of the information that can allow you to keep a finger on the pulse of your customers, your valued partners, and people who owe you money so that you know how to deal with them uh, accordingly. So that's keeping a finger on the pulse. And then the next topic I'm going to talk about for business resilience is how do you then digitize for productivity? So again, these concepts are very broad. They can be applied to you uh, as a uh, vendor, as a financial uh, bank, as a corporate who is trying to save money 
by growing your customer base or by reducing headcount and efforts in doing manual processes. So let's start with targeting because it's hard to target nowadays and you don't want to waste your sales time to go and call cold call people who have zero chance of signing up for your service. What you want to do is to have them contact companies or customers who are in the industry that's still growing, an industry that has still got healthy margins and you want them to be able to actually be very targeted, take sniper shot and call the right guys. So that's where big data comes in. That's where you should be using data and databases to select very carefully who you want to send your salespeople to, to ration their resources and to have better outcomes. So there are solutions out there where you can actually target the right corporates uh, who may be more attractive to you from a business perspective. Second thing about it is now that you have identify who you want to target, you convince them to sign the package. Then the question is, uh, from an onboarding perspective, do you need them to fill in five pages of forms or 10 pages of forms? Or can you digitalize your solution to make it paperless and frictionless? And apart from uh, just pre-filling forms and doing a form that's digital, if there's decision making to be done, for example, how much credit terms to give them? Is it cash on demand? 30 days, 60 days, or maybe if you are lending a loan, is it uh, approve, refer, or reject? What you want to do is to bring all this decision up front at the point of form filling and to tell the customer, congratulations, you're approved for this limit or this amount, and here we go, let's start doing business. What we don't want is a process whereby they submit the form, some underwriter or ops person sits on it for one week, and then the account gets opened two weeks later. I think that's really too slow for today's world. So what we're trying to do is to also automate the entire onboarding process using APIs or data that we can get from registry, from official sources as far as possible. So you do need to ask the customer the same question again and again. So that's onboarding. Uh, portfolio monitoring was what I covered in my previous slide. So those are various ways you can monitor your existing portfolio that will be way bigger than what you're acquiring on a weekly or monthly basis. So portfolio management is actually very key. And the trends we are seeing now is that people are no longer reading email alerts and just calling people based on emails. What we are seeing our customers do is that they like to take this data in via API and then integrated this data into the back-end system so that they can view the customer on a holistic level alongside other CRM information and to be able to send the account managers to act uh, accordingly. So if it's a payment alert, uh, then finance may need to act. But let's say if it's a business opportunity, the score is improving, they seem to be doing a roaring business, maybe the sales should be the one to contact the customer. So depending on what is the alert they get, actually uh, smart companies now are sending the correct departments to go and follow up with the customer. So that's also a way of being efficient by using the correct data points. Finally, uh, collections. So just now I talked briefly about this bureau concept, which is actually a best kept secret because not everyone knows about a bureau, but that's how people are able to deal with each other in a very trusted manner because they have got kind of inside information by being in a close group bureau. So when it comes to debt collections, the mere fact that you're in a bureau already uh, incentivize people to pay you first because if they don't, they paint themselves in a bad light when it comes to their own credit score. And in the market out there, apart from using bureau, when it comes to very, very late stage debts that you have already written off your books, right? Because you give up, you know, you can't contact them, you are prepared to take the loss on your PL. Uh, these are the loans that we call like written off loans. But actually, there are data services and services where they will attempt to collect back the bad debts and you only kind of uh, pay on success. So there are also this kind of third-party uh, collection services that you can also use to be able to recover the very late stage debts as well. And those can be very sizable for corporates. We have seen 50,000, 100,000 or a few hundred thousands of bad debts that were just written off. So imagine if you can help your company get those uh, money back. I think that will also be something that was quite remarkable as well. So I think with this, I've ended my sharing on all my tips on how to manage uh, the business for resilience. Uh, welcome any questions anyone may have. Thank you.